Hi, I'm here to uh, tell you uh, about Firefinch Limited today. My name is Michael Anderson, Managing Director. Um, we are a, a company with a, a gold mine in Mali, the Marilla Gold Mine, and our lithium project, uh, Gulamina, which has uh, just been the subject of a new joint venture with Gan Feng. Um, want to uh, talk to you about a bit of uh, uh, a zoology, if you like. Uh, Marilla, in the past, its nickname was Marilla the Gorilla. And so we're bringing that back to life and we're giving a new lease of life to Leo, Leo Lithium, um, with uh, the, the demerger of our Gulamina asset. So Gulamina, uh, obviously lithium is in a, a very uh, strong space at the moment. Uh, the, the whole electronic vehicle uh, um, uh, revolution, if you like, and, and the whole battery scene, has seen lithium enjoy a, a, a very significant uh, um, uptick in sentiment, uh, a lot of projects out there, but uh, you know, Gulamina certainly stands comparison to, to many of them. And then we're excited about the partnership that we're forming with, with Ganfeng going forward here. I mean, as door body is a 1.45% lithium oxide content, uh, which sees it stand very uh, uh, strong comparison with its peers. Uh, we brought it to a, a definitive feasibility study uh, level this time last year. Um, we we're in a situation where we considered our pathway forward and we began a, a, a strategic partnership process, which as I say, has led to uh, um, that joint venture with Ganfeng, who would have been attracted to the low cost operating environment that we're already enjoying in Mali with, with Marilla. Um, the quality of our uh, spodumene concentrate, which is 6% Li2O and, and running very low in impurities. And clearly our experience in Mali with the operating uh, gold mine sees us in a good position to, to, to leverage off our uh, social license to operate both with the communities that we operate in and the relationship that we have uh, with, the, with the Mali government. The Grand Feng, um, were, if you like, the... the uh, the party who appealed to us most through the process that we ran, uh, that we ran rather, and that that um, you know was was a, a, a far-reaching uh, um, process run by Macquarie Bank here in Perth to, to source a development partner for Gulamina. Ganfeng should need no introduction to those who are familiar with the lithium space. They're the world's number one producer of lithium chemicals, and very active in the space, seeking to grow their own downstream capability uh, by putting the foot, if you like, on the upstream uh, raw material supply. Uh, they are bringing to the table as their part of the joint venture, a funding package of, of 194 million US dollars. That was the development price tag that, that the, our feasibility study put on Gulamina. They're bringing $130 million of equity and up to $64 million of debt. And we're now in the process of, of updating that feasibility study and uh, working towards a final investment decision before the end of 2021. Um, you know, the, the valuation uh, metrics that uh, I guess are, are um, uh, see through from that deal are very attractive and we expect to unlock uh, that value for our Firefinch shareholders through our proposed de merger uh, early in uh, Q1 of, of 2022. A Gulamina, uh, um, sorry, the Gulamina offtake will be secured by Ganfeng once this deal is complete and once we have reached uh, commercial production. So we've called this new company Leo Lithium. We've uh, uh, secured the ASX code LLL, and that demerger, as I say, will take place early next year. And very importantly, only Firefinch shareholders will enjoy and receive the in species distribution of shares at no cost. Um, we're well advanced with the recruitment of, of uh, an individual to lead this business, somebody with uh, a, um, you know, very recent relevant experience in the industry, and uh, hope to be able to bring that news to market very soon. And, and clearly we're excited about the prospect of, of Leo enjoying its own lease of life on the ASX in, in, in the not too distant future. To the history of Marilla the Gorilla. So Marilla was a gold mine that was brought into production by Rand Gold, an Anglo-American, um, some 20 years ago and enjoyed a fantastic first few years of production. In its heyday, it produced over a million ounces in one year and historically has produced over seven and a half million ounces of gold. But we don't believe the... Uh, 
the gold has been anywhere exhausted and the gorilla is going to beat its chest again here. Uh, we, we acquired this mine for less than $30 million back in November of, of 2020. Um, an acquisition cost of less than $15 an ounce, which again stands comparison to, to any deal that's been done in recent times. And we didn't just acquire the, 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 the resource base, we acquired a four and a half million ton prenum processing facility which has required a little bit of refurbishment, but that's now done. We're back operating the full-blown crushing milling uh, um, and, and CIL circuit with a very skilled workforce that we inherited from back too. And we were nominated for MiningNews.net's Deal of the Year 2021. Um, we were up against some reasonably stiff compositions, uh, competition. So whilst we didn't win, we certainly believe that, that we're in good company there and with uh, lots of value to be added again for shareholders. And the question that we ask is, is how big can this system be? So you know, we, as I say, that Marilla has produced over seven and a half million ounces in its life. But from some of our recent drilling results, we know that we're far from done yet. Um, just a, a couple of weeks ago, um, we released our first diamond drill results from beneath the high grade zones um, at the Marilla Super Pit. And uh, our first result was 10 and a half meters at over 30 grams per ton. And those are spectacular results. And we believe that that may even sustain a, a, a dedicated underground operation in due course. But the first phase of the cutback and, and the open cut mining at Marilla will be in that Western zone uh, uh, designated by the second red oval there. And there we've, we've recently intersected over 58 meters at 1.75 grams per ton outside of the known resources. So here we already have just under two and a half million ounces of resources at an average grade of one and a half grams per ton. So this is new material, new ore uh, input inventory, hopefully uh, adding to the ounces, reducing the strip ratio and providing some very attractive economics for the next uh, uh, 10 years of my life that we've defined to date. But the ongoing drilling is designed to extend this mine life well in excess of that. The catalysts that lie ahead for us at Marilla is we are transitioning from uh, what was a tailings retreatment operation. We've got some production from our, our satellite pits, but the main prize here is to get back into the Marilla ore body itself. So we're currently dewatering the pit and we will get back into the pre-strip of Marilla early in 2022. And from there, it's about ramping production up from the current 50,000 ounces per annum to 120,000 ounces in 2022, 170,000 ounces in 2023, and back up above 200,000 ounces in 2024. And the job of the drill bit is to keep us at that level of production. Very confident that the, the near mine and indeed underground potential has, uh, will, will achieve that for us. And we also have some very prospective regional exploration tenure, over 685 square kilometers of it, in fact, which we haven't done uh, full justice to yet. And there will be uh, um, very targeted exploration on that unfolding over the next short while too. So very exciting times ahead for this, uh, this gold package around Marula. Mentioned our social license to operate. So uh, Firefinch has been operating in Mali for uh, over, over nine years already. Um, we got a dedicated in-country presence uh, um, at Marula, of course. And Gulamine is just a couple of hundred kilometers away to the, to the southwest. We're already employing over a thousand uh, um, people at Marula uh, and a vast majority of them locals. And, Mar and Mali has a very strong mining culture. And we expect to replicate that model of, of high percentage of local employment when we get into Marilla. And we're, we're seeking to develop very strong partnerships with local suppliers. So our mining contractors um, have a very strong Mali presence. Um, and and uh, you know, we, we choose Mali first uh, as and when we can. Um, and Mali has a great history as, as a gold producer. Um, some of the biggest com companies in the world, Barrick, Anglo-American, um, have been operating there for over 20 years, as we say. And look, we're bringing uh, hopefully what will be Mali's first lithium mine into production, if not the first a sizable lithium project in West Africa. And I think that uh, shapes to be a win-win for us as a company and Mali as a jurisdiction. And 
you know, all of this goes hand in hand with our commitment to, to, to operate at the highest levels of, of community and social engagement, recognizing that, uh, you know, that's a partnership that, that, that needs to flourish uh, and, and opportunities be created for, for our local uh, partners. We have inherited some very uh, clear and strong social programs from Barrick uh, when we acquired Marilla. Um, uh, you know, agriculture and, and, and um, social programs that, that we're committed to to fostering and, and indeed building upon, and and you know that uh, alongside the significant contribution that we expect to make in taxes, royalties, wages, and indeed that local procurement over the next ten plus years. Um, at Marilla and, and probably decades beyond that at Gulamina. So for us, we genuinely believe this is only the beginning. We are a company who's already achieved two transformational transactions in the last 12 months with the acquisition of Marilla and the joint venture with, with Gan Feng at Gulamina. Um, we want to leverage our track record as a board and management team to build both businesses with our strong operational experience. And we want to deliver on our promises and expand, explore, and, and, and add value wherever we can. And once we do get both of these assets into steady state production, um, over 200,000 ounces of gold from Marilla and over 400,000 tons of spodumene concentrate from Gulamina, we believe that'll shape as a very uh, strong platform from which to grow through strategic M&A. So a very exciting time. Um, we've had a great 12 months, but this is only the beginning and we look forward to keeping people informed as the Firefringe story unfolds. So thank you very much.